Okay, so we're late on this topic. Yes, this has been discussed quite heavily over the hockey Twitters and the hockey YouTube community, but I'm getting my hand in there because, hey, you know, at the end of the day, it's a trade rumor, and it's something that I do see value in at least discussing, and I will leave a link down in the description to a few sources. First off, it's the article we're going after. We're going over two articles here. The first one actually goes over the stuff we're talking about, but because it's behind a paywall, we're going over a second article, which describes the first article, and then I will leave a link to BNG Hockey's video that he made about the subject. He's a Bruins guy. He's got just less than a thousand subscribers, but I've been subbed to him for a while. Bruins content, really nice stuff that he does over there, and he dissected this trade idea on his channel very, very nicely, so I think you should go over there and check it out, because from a Bruins perspective, there indeed is a compelling argument that says that whatever it is, the idea that we're talking about here today is not a good idea, but... Let's get ourselves introduced to this topic now, shall we? So, first and foremost, there was this article on Florida Hockey Now, and the title of this article doesn't really explain anything as to what we're talking about here. Off the record, the Dallas Stars circle back on Howla, CBJ, and Hoffman, and then if you try to read the article, it actually is behind a paywall, like half of the content here is behind the paywall. So, what we're doing is we're going over to NHLTradeTalk.com. Yes, I know, it's kind of a not verified source, I would say. I don't really use this source ever, but they do summarize what exactly is said behind the paywall. So, take a look at this. It's a risky trade for both sides, but Jimmy Murphy of Florida Hockey Now reports the Flames and the Bruins might be talking a trade that would see Noah Hannafin move in exchange for a less expensive contract. Now, the one who indeed is noted in this conversation that might make the most sense it's Brandon Carlo. The Bruins are looking to improve their blue line after losing Tory Krug, and they might be willing to move Carlo if a deal that makes sense can be worked out, which is why the main idea that everybody's been talking about is, in some form or another, Noah Hannafin from the Flames in exchange for Brandon Carlo from the Boston Bruins. Now, let's go over the profile of both of these guys. Brandon Carlo, we'll start off with him because he is the Boston guy in this conversation. 23 years old, 6'5", right-handed defenseman, 212 pounds. He doesn't really produce all too many points. He had 19 points in 67 games last season, but points are not his forte, man. You're not really getting a Brandon Carlo because you want to get production out of him. You're getting him because he's a really solid shutdown D-man who knows how to let the game come to him and react accordingly. This is the kind of guy who, at 23 years old, he's already a very good shutdown guy. So, going into the long-term future, as the game evolves around him, as he develops his game too, he is a guy whom I know many Bruins fans have been very reluctant on the idea of trading away. Even on BNG Hockey's video, he's gotten mostly Bruins fans in the comments section. I was reading through that, and I was like, yeah, Bruins fans don't want this guy to leave. Search up Carlo on Twitter, and you see what Bruins fans have to say about him, and they say the same thing. Yeah, he's a great player, man. I don't care if we're getting a Noah Hannafin back, I want to keep this Brandon Carlo guy on our squad. And that's not a reflection on how biased Bruins fans are or whatever, or how bad Noah Hannafin is. It's just kind of, you know, the good overall qualities that Brandon Carlo does bring. Because the score sheet, the numbers, the production, it doesn't really tell the whole story. Because if you go over to Noah Hannafin, take a look at what this guy has on the chopping block over here. He's 23 years old, too. So both of these guys are in the same range. They were taken in the same draft, too. Noah Hannafin, 6'3", 205 pounds, but he's a left-handed defenseman. He's a guy who, in the most previous season got 22 points in 70 games played, but the previous seasons before that. Three straight years in a row, he was a 30-point defenseman at the ages of 19, 20, and 21. So, that's not bad. That's really not bad. He's a two-way guy. I remember when Noah Hannafin was drafted. The 2015 draft, in my opinion, though, is the funnest, most amazing draft to rewatch because I always end up looking back on those times. I was in grade nine at the time, and man, oh, all the nostalgia just from seeing McDavid and Marner and Strom and all those guys in the OHL tearing things up, and Hannafin was there as well. There was such a big boat that said that Noah Hannafin could become a number one defender in the league one day, a Norris-caliber guy, but... Hey, even though he's not that, he's still a very capable top four defenseman who can get upwards of 30 points in a year, which is very good. He's still getting better, just like Carlo, and he still has more room to grow. Does he ever become a number one like people were saying back in 2015? Eh, I don't think so. But at the end of the day, even though this guy was taken fifth overall, he is still a very, very good player. And at the contract he is at, $4.95 million till 2024. Who man, sign me up. That is a great, great kind of player in terms of the overall power. Package. 
Now, this is another point that I'm stealing from BNG Hockey's video, but people will take a look at Noah Hannafin and say, man, this guy's been from team to team to team, but at the end of the day, you have to take a look at the context of the teams that traded him away. Because the Carolina Hurricanes, they're a team that has a lot of defensemen, they have a lot of young talent, they're always shipping out guys and bringing other defensemen in. It's not really a big surprise, in my opinion, to see the magnitude of guys that have been shuffled around in that Carolina Hurricanes blue line. And then for the Flames, they're in a position where they might even be close to rebuild. Thing. Who really knows? They're in a spot where people are saying whether or not Gaudreau or Monaghan could get traded. So, Hannafin being in a conversation like this, it is less on the player and it is a lot more on the actual context of the team that he plays for. But this is where the dilemma comes in, because Noah Hanfin is indeed from Boston. He's a Boston college guy. He was from the Massachusetts area. So... It's kind of understandable to see why Bruins fans have been saying, yeah, you know, Boston, you know, Hannafin, you want to come here, man? And the Bruins have been reportedly been in trade talks for this guy for a long, long time. But again, even though there is a very valuable piece in Noah Hannafin, it's just of my opinion, just from seeing what Bruins fans have to say, that they just really like Carlo to the point where they don't want to do it. He's a right-handed guy, this Brandon Carlo is, and if you get rid of this guy and you move up some of the other players you have in the Boston Bruins blue line, it gets really ugly really fast after that Charlie McAvoy. Sure, your left side, it's pretty... It's kind of ugly, too, because you don't have Tori Krug anymore, and you're not really sure on what Zdeno Chara is going to go forward with. So having a Noah Hannafin over there can be very, very nice, and having a Hannafin-McAvoy pairing can be so, so good. It's just everything underneath that. My gosh, that can be very, very detrimental to your hockey team. So, overall, with the Bruins' decor, we kind of knew things were going to get ugly, especially with that Tory Crew departure and the whole Zdeno Chara fiasco. But if there is indeed a trade over here to be made, this to me, and in my own personal words, I would say it like this, if you're trading away Carlo for Hannafin, where exactly does your team improve? Does your team get any better with a trade like this? You're still at the same amount of defensemen as you had last time. You're just moving one of your right-handed guys to the left. And sure, that number one pairing can be very good, but what do you do with the rest of your lineup, man? The rest of your lineup is going to be an absolute tire fire if you assume you're going with the same amount of people that you have now. At least with the way you have things today, you could have McAvoy on one pairing, he can carry that load, and then you have Carlo in the next pairing, and he's carrying that load. So, who knows if Carlo is even the appropriate guy to trade away in a scenario like this. People have been saying, okay, maybe Jake DeBrus can be that guy instead, or maybe a prospect, maybe Urho and maybe a John Beecher, maybe a Beecher and a few picks or something like that. Trade it away for Hannafin, because we know the Calgary Flames may be in a direction of rebuilding so they can get some young assets back, right? And that makes a lot more sense to me. It makes a lot more sense to say, okay, we'll trade away a prospect, we'll trade away a pick to add over to our blue line. We're trading away stuff that we can turn into other assets elsewhere, not swap a blue liner for a blue liner. Sure, you're locking him up for a longer amount of time because, hey, Noah Hannafin's going on until 2024. That's a very good contract you have, and Carlo does expire next year, but... Still, from a fundamental point of view, from a cup contending team that still can compete and that would probably still want to be in the cup finals year after year after year, next year and beyond, it does not make sense to me to say in any respect, let's trade away one blue liner for another blue liner who just happens to play on the other side. You're making the rest of your decor worse with that move. You're stacking up one pairing and, you know, if it's something else, it would make a lot more sense to me. So that's just my own personal opinion. Carlo and Hannafin... Sure, even though they're completely different players stylistically, and sure, they're completely different players in terms of the score sheet, one gets a lot more points than the other. Also, when it comes to the history, one of them was drafted fifth overall, the other one was drafted in the second round of the same draft. They're pretty good players in my opinion, and you could say that the value in some respects is equal in terms of the overall just meaningful attribution to the team. But swapping one for the other, eh, I don't really know how much that makes sense. Even for the Flames, man. The Flames are in a position where they lost out on TJ Brody, who plays on the right side. They got themselves Chris Tanev, which is a nice acquisition there. Say what you want about the overall ability for him to stay healthy. But you already have a right-handed shutdown guy in Chris Tanev. Why do you need another one? You know... This is making a lot less sense the further I go into it, so I'm just going to end it off here. Talk to me in the comments what you think. Noah Hannafin for Brandon Carlo. Would you do it? Would you not? Why would you or why wouldn't you? Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sure that is Trollis is 9 and 9. And...
Bye.